Hi there, this is Phil with Phil Effects. I've got uh, another tutorial on, uh, we're working, continuing on our project with our modeling of our uh, iPod Nano. And so now we're, uh, we finished up the body. We did that last week. And so you should have a, a body that's essentially done with the basic shape. Uh, we did that by uh, working with a pipe and putting a custom top and bottom on it and modifying it uh, by moving the vertices and imported images for references. We scaled this to the proper size and so now we're ready to move on. So there's a number of things that we need to do to finish this up. Let's uh, look at a couple of our reference images. So we've got this uh, picture I took off the web of our Nano and we can see this from the front. And if I look at this, I got a picture looking at it from the top and I got a picture looking at it from the bottom. So we can see that there's a number of things that we need to do to finish this up. We need to put this uh, circular wheel that's on there. Uh, we need to put in something so we can put on this display. And we need to define that. We need to put this switch on the top. And we've got a square slot and a uh, hole here for the uh, headphones. So all of those things need to be placed onto our uh, model. And uh, you're looking at this and you say, well, what's the right way to do this? What should I do first? And you might be inclined to maybe pick one of these on the top and say, well, those look pretty easy. Let me do those first. Uh, I can tell you from experience, I think the thing that I would want to do first is I want to put this round uh, circle control on the body first. And uh, I'll explain that in a, as we go through here. But the first thing I think we're gonna do here is we're gonna put this on and then we'll put the screen. So today's tutorial for this week, uh, not all in this one tutorial, but we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to put this uh, circular object onto the surface and put the screen on here. We'll uh, do another tutorial for putting the on off switch and putting these on the bottom. So let me close these down. And uh, I'll keep this up. One of the most or trickiest things that people do have problems with is when you're trying to merge different shapes together. And Maya has a command called Boolean and I've seen people use it. And depending upon what you're trying to do, you can use it and you can use it successfully. If all you're going to do is make the object one color, you're not going to put any textures on it. You don't care about UVs. You don't care about uh, too much detail. Using a Boolean is fine and that'll work great. Uh, in our case, we actually want to do more than that. And we want some pictures on there and we want them to look nice. And there's a lot of other things that we want to put together. Uh, you know, I want to be able to put this uh, texture on here. We want to put a texture on the circular map here. And to do that, you really need a, a much more sophisticated uh, mesh and a much more sophisticated layout. So uh, just doing a Boolean doesn't lend itself. And uh, I'll do a, just a quick demo here to show you some of the problems associated with doing a Boolean. So let me kind of slide our thing out of the place here. And if I put a uh, rectangle into my scene, and let's go in here with my rectangle. So I got a poly cube, and I'll just put make these three, and let me scale this up a little bit. So we have this guy here, and then uh, let me get a cylinder and bring this over. And I'll take him and we'll rotate him in uh, Z by 90. Okay, so I have this cube and I have this uh, cylinder. And I want to merge these two together, which actually is not too different from what we're trying to do with our iPod Nano. Okay, we've got uh, spherical things on the front that we want to do. And we've got a... Uh, uh, rectangular kind of face that we want to put that on. So the, uh, the classic way of doing this with Booleans is you go in and you, you get your two shapes and you, you take your one shape and you push it into your other shape. So I have these two meshes here. All right. 
and I'll go in and I select the two together and we go up to mesh edit mesh or here it is so we get this mesh menu we got booleans and uh, actually let me just close this in we have union difference in uh, intersection union takes the two shapes and just makes one shape out of everything difference will subtract one shape from the other and it follows because subtraction is not commutative it follows the formula of a minus b and a is the first thing you select and b is the second thing you select so if i was in here and i selected this shape and then i selected this shape and said difference you get the difference and what it is it did is the uh cylinder was shortened by the amount that the box cut it if i do an undo on that and i select the cylinder first and uh, or i select the cube first rather and then select the cylinder and do a difference you can see we went in and we cut a hole into our cube using that cylinder all right uh, if i undo that and select the two and do an intersection it just says what's the intersection of those two shapes and it gives me the remaining shape all right so that's using booleans uh, let me do a union and show you some of the problems that you have with this so i did a union so this is all one shape now and the difficulty you run into is if you have your shape and now you want to do some smoothing okay so we go in here and i smooth it and you end up with all kinds of weird pinching going on you see all these strange uh, if I click off, you can you can look at the surface. I mean, the surface at that uh, union there, it's just really pretty horrible, okay? You have all kinds of stretching going on because of the... The reason that you have this going on is because you have all these edge loops that don't meet each other. And, and then in addition, in creating this union, you created all these n-gons. N-gons, if you remember, is a polygon that has more than four sides well like if we take this guy right here and i select the face i've got a, a face that has one two three four five six sides to it all right uh, this end gun here has one two three four five kind of a six seven eight on it so we have all these end gods and these end gods just end up being uh, a real problem and they end up making a mess out of the whole thing so this is not the way to do this all right so let me take all this go back into object mode select this and delete it so i'm back and uh, so what we want to do is i want to put a circular object and i want to uh, mesh it into this rectangular kind of shape and there's a method to my madness and uh, there's a way to do this so everything will work out and you end up with a very uh, smooth blended uh, mixing of a uh, cylindrical object right into a square face so the first thing we want to do is obviously we need to pick our primitive and uh, because this is cylindrical you could say well there's two kind of primitives there's a pipe and there's a cylinder uh, so i have to decide what i really want and i can either use a pipe or i can use a cylinder and having gone through this at this point in time uh, we're going to want to build the surface across the surface just like we did on the tops and so when we made this initial ipod model for the body we used the pipe and i'm going to want to do the same thing here on this inside surface and to do that again this uh pinched top that you end up with on the cylinder that you can see right here uh, ends up being a problem so if i go into uh, object mode and slide him out this pinch top i talk about in, in class this ends up being problematic especially if we want to put in textures and things like that and it's just too difficult to deal with so we're not going to work with that i want to work with a pipe and so i've got this pipe here and what I want to do is first thing we need to do is we want to rotate that and we want to rotate that in the x-axis by 90 and let me shift this and go over here and let me put x-ray mode on so we can see what's behind 
So we see our design here. And here is my pipe. And let me move this up. And yeah, we'll zoom in. And what I want to do is I want to uh, design this uh, initially. I want to set this up so it's pretty close to what I want in size, okay? And having done this before, uh, I want a radius that's about 1.5. And you can see if I make a radius of 1.5, that puts me just a little bit above it and below it on the top and bottom and if I center that right and you can see my picture actually isn't quite centered in so let's go ahead and fix that right now uh, if I turn reference off select my picture and zoom out just a little bit I want to take and slide that picture just to the left a little bit so I can get that centered in just a little bit better that looks good okay so now I have my Here's my cylinder, that looks good. And my picture is referenced better, and so you can see I'm a little bit inside of it here, and I'm a little bit outside of it there, and that's pretty much where I wanna be. The reason that the picture is not circular, circular is because the picture was taken with a camera, and the camera shows perspective. And so there's gonna be a little bit of distortion because the surface of the uh, iPod Nano isn't flat, and because of that you see some distortion so let's get back we're going to change the size on this so i uh, went to a radius of 1.5 and i want to bring this bottom part down and the thickness the way the pipes work is you bring this inside radius in by uh changing the thickness so if i go down here on my parameters and i change the thickness to about 0.8 that makes it just about perfect. So we can see that uh, 0.8 is the right size to bring my inside radius to just about where I want it. And 1.5 is good for the outside radius. So I like this and this works out pretty good. And so let's move on to the next part of how we do our adjustments. So I wanna go in and I wanna be able to see the lines on the iPod and I want to see the lines on my uh, pipe and I want to see the two of them together. So the way to do that is we uh, go over here and we turn on grid lines so we can see them both at the same time. And at the moment, the grid itself is getting a little confusing. So let's just turn that off so we don't have to see it. So now we can see the uh, grid lines of the Nano and those are going uh, up and down vertically and or the edge loops rather and we can see all the edge loops that's on my pipe now what we want to do to make this work out is we need to make the edge loops of the nano body match where the ed edge loops are going to be on the pipe and let me just do this and then i will explain this as i go through so we have an edge loop that's coming down here and an edge loop in the center and an edge loop that's coming down here. Well, the one that's in the center, lo and behold, because these two shapes are centered, you can see that this edge loop of the Nano is hitting the edge loop of the uh, pipe. And that's exactly where I want it. So that works out perfect for us. This edge loop here, if I go into edge mode, this edge loop is not where I want it to be. I want this edge loop to line up right as close as I can get it to this intersection right here because, well, you'll see what I'm going to do as we get on. And then the same goes for this one. Well, since these two are symmetrical, I can select the two together and I double click to select this one and I double click to select that one. You want to get the entire edge loop. Don't just click on it. If you click on it, you might click on the front, but you don't get the whole loop. So you want to double click and you want to double click and if you want to check even you can go here and check on your uh, view to make sure yes in fact you've selected that entire loop okay so I've selected the entire loop I go back to here what I want to do is bring these together well the way to bring these together is use the R 
on your keyboard so you can scale. And I take this and I bring these two in. And I'm going to bring these two in together so they're symmetric and I move them equally on both sides. And now you can see I've lined this one up to the top of that one which also lines up to the top of the one on the bottom and the point right there on the bottom. So that's the first thing I want to do. And then uh, I want to take this one and let me double click this one and I want to do the same thing to those and I'm going to make those line up right there. Okay, so if you can guess now we have an issue in that I need to add some more loops going this way. And the simplest way to do that is actually I'd like to have some loops that go across. All right. So I'm going to actually insert an edge loop. So we go to uh, Mesh Tools here. And let me get my insert edge loop. And I'm going to put an edge loop right here at the bottom of this display because I know I will absolutely need an edge loop right there regardless. So that's my first edge loop. All right. And the second edge loop is I've got, uh, well, there's one down here in the bottom, all right? But uh, what we want to be able to do going forward is we want to take all of the edge loops and things that we do around this circular object, and we want to isolate it from things that we do on the display, things we do on the bottom, and things we do on the top. And one of the ways we do that is we put some edge, uh, put an edge loop horizontally across here, and horizontally across the bottom. So if we add anything, the first thing it's going to hit before anything I have inside here is it's going to hit that first loop. And that allows me to have better control. Uh, that may not make sense to you just yet, but just bear with me and we'll see what we do, see what I do here. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to put an edge loop here and I'm going to go an equal space and put an edge loop right there. And uh, they don't have to be absolutely exact, but you want them fairly close in their placement. All right. So now I've got one at the, one at the top, one at the bottom. And you can see I'm starting to box this in. So now I want to put an edge loop that's equal to that point right there. So I click on here. Oops, drop the tool. Insert edge loop. Click on there. So that's my edge loop and bring this across and I put it right there. That's one. Click on here and I put it right there. So now I have an edge loop hitting this point, that point, this point, that point, and that point, and this one. All right. So now we need some horizontal ones. Okay. And I need a horizontal one first that splits the circle right in the middle. So I go in here. Put an edge loop right there. Let me zoom up just a little bit maybe. I click up here and I put one right there. Go over here and I put one right there. I go over here and I put one right here. And there's one more. I put it in and I put this right here. Now, what I'm doing is I am creating a series of quads that are going to surround a this pipe that I'm going to put on the surface of this uh, nanobody. And the quads, you can see them right here. Here's one top, one bottom. It goes up to here and then goes up. I've got a short animation. Let me show that to you and it will explain this just a little bit better. Okay, watch this light up as this goes across. You can see each of the uh, uh, quads that are being highlighted with my uh, red lines going across. That's what I'm looking for. So when I drew in all of these edge loops, I was looking to put quads all around the outside of the uh, round sphere. And then in the center, we're going to delete everything. That green center, all of the uh, quads that are inside the center are of that are going to get deleted and that's how we're going to replace what used to be the face of the iPod Nano with our new uh, pipe that we put on there. Okay, we're back 
and that animation hopefully illustrated how these quads I have now made all around this uh, cylindrical object that we're going to, this pipe rather, that we're going to put on the surface. So we've gone in and we've successfully placed the edge loops and we've put in the detail of what we need. Now the trick is we want to take and put this cylinder, uh, essentially just the face of this cylinder, onto this iPod Nano body. Well, we got a couple of problems and you might be able to see right off the bat also with that. If I look at this, if we look at this from the top, on purpose, this has a shape that's not flat, okay? So it has a, a curved surface to it. And you can see that as we zoom in here, you can see that it's a little thinner here and it's a little thicker on these edges. So how do we do this? Well, it turns out there's a command in Maya that's going to allow us to do this perfectly. So first off, like I said, I don't need the whole rest of this pipe. I really just need this front surface. So let's go in and let's get rid of the things we don't need. So I can take the... Uh, uh, let me get my outliner so I can pick things up a little bit easier. And so I can take the uh, body, iPod body, and let me hide that. So I do a control H on that. So we have this pipe here. And uh, I can go in and let's put this in face mode. And I can select faces. Let's see what my camera select actually is on. And I don't want camera based selection. I want to select everything. So let's go back in and do that again. Let's make sure I've selected everything. Yep, looks like it has. I have everything inside on the front, back, and all the sides. And all I have is this face. So I can hit delete. And now all I have is this face. And that's exactly what I wanted. I just want the face. All right. So let's take the body. Shift H, bring that back. And now what we want to be able to do is I want to be able to place this onto this body. So the thing we want to do is we want to make this round face, but it's flat, conform to this bent kind of curved uh, body of the iPod Nano. And the way that we do that is we go over to the mesh command and we go down here under remesh and we use this conform tool. And what conform is going to do is it's going to take this shape and it's going to make it conform to the surface here. And that's the first step that we need to do to another to put this uh, face that we have that's round onto this iPod uh, Nano body. So the way we do this is we go over here and I select the object and I click on this little last magnet here and it's going to make this object, it's going to make the body uh, live. So I click on that and now the iPod Nano body is live. All right. And I take this and I go to, I select it and I say mesh. And all I need to do is say conform. And it's going to take that face and it's going to conform it. There you go. Right to the body. Look at that. So it took... And it, it uh, uh, perfectly matched the contour of the iPod Nano body with that surface. And it placed it exactly right on the surface. It's not just a little bit above it. It's not just a little bit behind it. It is right exactly on that same surface, which is uh, exactly what we want. And so then I have my Nano body. Uh, I can't select it because it's live. So now I have to make it unlive. So I click, and so now uh, Make Live is disabled. I can select the body. And you don't see the uh, face there because it's, uh, they're right on top of each other. And so visually you don't see it, but, but trust me, they're both right there. So I have this nano body, and I have this pipe. Actually, these two things I don't need anymore. Let me get rid of those. All right, so I have, this is my face, this is my body. Let me shift select. So what I want to do here first is I'm gonna go in and remember that green square in the tutorial I showed you. 
uh, I want to go in and will want to delete these faces to combine these things together. Uh, so I go in and uh, we uh, take and I select this. I go into face mode and no wrong thing. Select this one, go into face mode. Don't want to select that. Let me hide that. Okay. So I select that face, shift select. Now, actually here, I want to make sure that I do have camera select on because I don't want to be selecting faces behind me. So I make sure camera select is on and I start selecting these faces. So I want to delete these because I don't want them. All right. We're going to fill this hole up with the uh, new object that we put in there. All right. So I just delete those. So now that's gone. So I've deleted that face. All right. Now if I take this pipe, do a shift H, we see it. Okay. Now I have two meshes and I want to merge them together. All right. I can't uh, connect this face of this cylinder to the iPod Nano body unless they are the same mesh. They're not the same mesh and you can tell that because I can select this mesh or I can select that mesh. If they were the same mesh, I'd select the two together. Well, you don't see that. But I can combine them and that's exactly the command we use. So I select this mesh and I select that mesh and I go up to mesh here and I say combine. And if I collect that, now these are one mesh and the two will connect. So now all I'm left with doing is I need to take and I want to take the vertices here that are from the old iPod Nano and I want to take those vertices and merge them to the points that are up here. Now this looks maybe just a tad confusing. If I put this, uh, let me turn this off and I go into uh, vertex mode. Does that help? No, that's a little bit more confusing. Let me go back to shaded. So if we look at it in shaded, what I want to do is I need to take this vertex and I need to move it up here. Well, there's a command and I haven't used this much yet, uh, but uh, let's use the uh, uh, toolbox, the, uh, the modeling toolbox. And what we want to do is we want to use a tool here called target weld. And what target weld will do is I can select a vertex and then uh, let me just demonstrate here. So I want to take this vertex because this is part of the old iPod Nano and I want this to connect right up to this point. So you can see I put in those edge loops and I wasn't exactly perfect. It doesn't end up, that ends up not being a problem. All right, for what we want to do, this will end up being fine. So I want to select this one and I want to target weld. So I go in and I select this and you can see that orange highlight. And there I'm saying, I want you to weld it and move it to that point. So bingo, it does that. All right. So now I want to take this one and I want to move it to that point. I want to take this one. I want to move it to that point. I want to take this one, move it to that point. Take this one, move it to that point. Here it gets a little bit tricky. You want to be careful because what you want to do is the geometry you preserving is the pipe. You don't want to move. This is the pipe uh, vertex. This is the iPod Nano vertex. I want to move the iPod Nano vertex to the pipe vertex. So I click on this one and I move it there. All right. Click on this one and I move it there. Click on this one and I move it there. Click on this one, move it there. Let's zoom in. Okay, this is the Nano. And this is the pipe. So I'm going to click on this one and move it there. All right. Click on this one, move it there. Click on this one, move it there. Click on this one, move it there. 
Let's work our way all the way around here. I applied nano to the pipe. Nano to the pipe. Nano to the pipe. Nano to the pipe. And one more. Nano to the pipe. All right. So if you look at this, you can see what we've done here. All right. So we have got actually a beautiful uh, blending of putting a essentially a round peg into a square hole, if you will, or, or putting a round hole into a square peg. Maybe that's a better way to say it. But I have a perfect blending of taking this cylindrical object and I've successfully placed it and embedded it into our rectangular object. And not only was our object rectangular, but it had a, a surface that was uh, not planar. So what I'm going to do is I'll stop at this tutorial and I'll create another one and we'll talk about how we finish this up because we have to build a new center here and so we'll build that new center we're going to add some edge loops to create some details so we get some high definition on the round edges and that will essentially finish off uh, putting the uh, dial onto our iPod Nano. So this is Phil with Phil Effects.